hello all and welcome to lecture number two on Python program. Today we're going to cover chapters five and seven in our book Think Python and in chapter five we're going to talk about modulus and floor division which is going a little bit more into arithmetic. We're going to talk about conditionals and if statements. We're going to finish up today by talking about in chapter seven iteration, reassignment, and while loops. So let's go ahead and get started. Floor division and modulus. If we think back to our algebra days, when we divide, we can get a whole number and then we can get a remainder. So in Python, we're able to get all of those numbers. If we use the double slash instead of a single slash, we're going to get a whole number and it rounds down to the integer. So that would be the number without the remainder. We can get the remainder by using the percent sign, which is called the modulus. And that is going to return back to you the, the remainder of what is left over when you do that division. When we look at this example here, if I use the single slash and I have minutes equal to 105, the single slash will give me the floating point value of 1.75. But 1.75 hours isn't really what we're used to thinking about. We're used to thinking about hours and minutes. And 0.75 of an hour is not 75 minutes. We can take care of a case like this by saying hours equals minutes with the double slash of 60. And that is gonna give us the one full hour. So that is the whole number when we divide. The remainder is gonna give us the same value here when we use the percent sign, which is the remainder and what is left over. So we can say the remainder equals the minutes and the modulus of the 60. That's gonna give us 45 minutes left over. 45 minutes is that 0.75 or three quarters of an hour. So we can see here it is one hour and 45 minutes. In Python, we also can use Boolean expressions. A Boolean expression is something that's gonna to evaluate to either true or false. So anytime we do a comparison of something and we can get that true or false answer out of it. We can get a true or false by using relational operators. So for example, we have a double equal sign. Now remember, a single equal sign is the assignment statement. So that's where you're giving a value to a variable. Well, two equal signs is going to compare and see if they have an equal value. So does one equal one? True. The second one we have here is a not equal, which is an exclamation point, which is not, and the equal sign put together. So is one not equal to one false? Then we have our greater than and less than along with our greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. We can compare using our greater than by itself or our greater than accompanied by an equal sign, which is greater than or equal to. And the same goes for less than. So we have a less than or a less than with an equal sign, meaning less than or equal to. We use these Boolean expressions in conjunction with conditional statements in order to do what we call a conditional execution. It's going to execute statements based on a specific condition. That's where we get that word conditional execution. We're going to use something called an if statement or an if condition or if else or decision making. It has a lot of different words. Here in Python, we have the syntax, if condition is true, it's gonna execute true statements. We can then use the word else to do something if it's false. So in that case, we have if condition, it runs certain things if it's true, or after the else word, we will display something if it's false. So let's look at our example. Here we have x, percent sign two. Now, if we remember back to just a few minutes ago, that means if I divide X by two and I have 
no remainder. What the what is the remainder of that? If that remainder is equal to zero, that means that the number is even. So I'm going to print x is even. Otherwise, I'm going to print x is odd. I only have two choices. Either my number is going to be even or odd. So the evaluation for this is looking at if the modulus, which is the remainder, when I divide by two is equal to zero, I'm going to print as even. Otherwise, I'm going to print it's odd. Here we can see a little bit about the syntax. So the words if and else are showing up in a different color using idle because they are key words. Here I've got if, I've got my conditional statement, which is x modulus 2 equals equals 0. That whole thing put together of the Boolean with the um, expression and the math, all of that together is my conditional statement. At the end of my conditional statement, I need a colon. That is telling my Python that that is the end of my conditional statement, and then I can move on. I can put a bunch of these together if I so choose, and we call that chained conditionals. So in this case, I've got a few different choices. I don't just have even and odd, but I have three different choices in this example. So for the top part, I, can, I have three different choices. X can either be less than Y, it can be greater than Y, or it could be equal to Y. So I look for those three conditions. So if x is less than y, I'm going to print it's less than y. If x is greater than y, I'm going to print it's greater than y. And then I fi finally end up with an else. So you start out with an if, you end with an else, everything in between is an else if, but in Python we don't really put that extra e in there, so it's e-l-i-f, so elif. In these types of statements, once it finds it's true, it jumps out of that statement. So say, for example, I'm here and my x is in fact less than y, it's going to print x is less than y and then come out of this final else and then move on to the next statements. If it finds it's true, it doesn't look at the rest of the chained conditionals. Here at the bottom, I have another one where I have three choices. You can either choose A, B, or C. And based on the choice, you're going to do something different. So if my choice is equal to A, then I'm going to draw A. Else if choice B equals B, I'm going to draw B. Otherwise, I'm going to draw C. Here I did end with an else if. That is also acceptable. Else is going to be your default value. So if nothing else is true, that's what's going to happen. Well, if nothing else is true and you don't actually want anything to happen, that's when you're going to end with the else if. So here, if my choice actually equals, say, x, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to skip this whole block of code together. Now I can put things inside of another, and that's called a nested. So say we've got like eggs in a nest, we've got an if inside an if. So for this example, and this is going to run identical to the one that we just saw, so there's no real difference in this. I've got if x is less than y, print x is less than y. Otherwise, right, that's what else is going to mean in these cases, it means otherwise. If x is greater than y, print x is greater than y, else print x and y are equal, because those are my only three choices. So the biggest difference here is that you can see we use indenting to group our items together. So my if and my else here are lined up, and my if and my else are lined up here. But really the only difference is that this is an if instead of an l if within this else. It's going to execute the same. In Python, you can use the same variable multiple times, and you can do something called reassignment. All that's doing is changing the value of that variable. So for example, here I have x equals 5. If I print x, it's 5. If I then type x equals 7 and type x, it's going to give me 7. What it's doing in the computer's memory is that originally you had it equal to the value of 5. And it basically ignores that and then sets it equal to the value of 7. 
So you're using the same variable over again and just giving it a new value. We can update variables in a few different ways. So we can use the reassignment that we just saw to completely change what is going on with our variable. Now we can also create a new value that's dependent upon the old value in an example like this in the green, which is x equals x plus one. So our new x value is gonna be dependent upon what was originally in that x, and then we're doing some manipulation to it. We can initialize a variable, and that is giving an initial value to something, um, such as zero or one. And typically, if we're going to do this new value depending upon that old value, this goes hand in hand with initializing, because we have to give it an initial value in order to manipulate it. Two other things that we can do is we can do something called an increment, which is adding one, or a decrement, which is subtracting one from a variable. So if we're going to count up from one to five, we can increment by saying one, two, three, four, five by adding one each time. Or we can count down from five to one by subtracting one each time. So five, four, three, two, one. In Python, we have an iteration, which is a repeating step or something that you may have heard called, called a loop before. We are going to look at the while statement today, and it is gonna determine if the condition is true or false, and if it's false, it's gonna exit. And if it's true, it's going to do whatever steps I give it, and then go back to step one where it determines if the condition is true. When we use a while statement, you do have to be careful of avoiding an infinite loop. And an infinite loop is where you're going to run through one, two, and three basically forever because the false condition is never met. So if I never meet that false condition, I never get out of this while statement. So it's gonna do one and three basically until I do a hard stop on that program. Last, let's take a quick look at a while example. So I've got a script on the left here, and I've got a while loop example. I'm going to initialize a variable of, of a counter, and I'm gonna call it count, and I'm gonna set that equal to one. I'm going to just display what the count is initially, and so the, initial, the count is initially one. Then I'm going to implement my while loop and I want to keep looping until the counter is greater than 100. So while my count is less than 100 and there's my colon again. My colon is indicating to the Python that I'm done with that conditional statement and I'm heading into the loop. So while my count is less than 100, count equals count times nine and then I'm gonna print what the new count is. Now, Python is going to use that white space and indentation to indicate that that is part of the while loop. So while I'm within the while loop, I'm going to use count equals count times nine. So initially it's one. So my new count is one times nine, which is nine. And so I'm gonna print now the count is nine. Next round of the loop, because my nine is still less than 100, my count is going to be equal to nine times nine, which is now 81. So it's gonna print, now my count is 81. It's gonna keep repeating that until my count is, le is greater than 100. So the next time around, I get 81 times 81 is 729, which now my count is 729, and 729 is in fact greater than 100. So it's going to get out of that loop and go down to the next statement, which is then gonna print the counter is 729. So here we can see how it's going to keep going around in that loop until that condition is met. Quick overview, this is a short section, but it is, does cover two chapters in the book. So go ahead and take some time and read through them. But we did cover modulus and floor and the division of getting that whole number and the remainder. 
We talked about conditionals, which is giving us a true or false rather than assigning a value. And then we used those conditionals in if statements to say if to make a decision. So if something is true, do something. We wrapped up this shorter lecture with chapter seven and going through iteration, which is where you repeat steps over and over again. And within that iteration, we have the reassignment. And we talked about how we can use a variable over and over again in either by adding to it, subtracting to it, changing it completely, um, or creating a new value based on the, the existing value. And we showed how that was useful when we are in this while loop. Hopefully you got all of the information you needed out of this quick lecture covering chapters five and seven, and I will see you next time.